So <clears throat> I've been thinking about this title that I shared with you. And listen, I want to be frank and con uh, candid with you. It's a bit clickbaity. And what I mean to say, oftentimes these titles that are written for women to click on them is all centered of what you need to do to change for a man. And I get it. It's probably frustrating. And at the same time, I want to be candid with you is that you probably wouldn't have clicked on the video if I wrote just a standard title like um, <laughs> guys are not going to do whatever you want them to do. OK. So I wanted to lean into this conversation about what really makes a man feel like, I hope I don't lose this person. And I'll be candid with you. Much of this content is based uh, partly on my own relationship. And there's a picture of me and my beloved right there. But at the same time, I believe that what I'm about to share is centered around human behavior for those that have a healthy love attachment style, for those that have healthy emotional maturity, for those that have relatively good relationship skills. And yet the reality is, is it, in the dating, mating, and relating realm, it is rather messed up when it comes to um, meeting your soulmate, meeting that person that you click with, that you vibe with. And I recognize the frustration with that because we are swimming in a sea of dysfunctionality. That's right, we're swimming in a sea of dysfunctionality, primarily when it comes to emotional maturity and particularly in relationship skills. And what I mean by relationship skills, those skills that help two people navigate the challenges in life outside of the attraction piece are, are, are for thousands of years, well, for millennia, I should say, that is thousands of years is millennia, for hundreds of thousands of years, most mating practice has been based on physical attraction, that attraction between two people that we feel like we click with this person. We call this chemistry. And when we feel that sense of chemistry, we get this sense that this person is the right person for us. This person is my soulmate. When we feel that initial stage of chemistry. Now, if you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg chart, and I apologize for the glare, I want to show this with you. Above the waterline is attraction. I was just talking about chemistry. At the same time, what really makes a relationship work is what's below the waterline. It's compatibility, it's shared values, blendable lifestyle. And so I was just sharing with you emotional maturity. And without that level of emotional maturity, we could be experiencing one relationship after another. And listen, I get it. It's frustrating. There are men and women out there that are self-centric. There are men and women out there that are either anxious love attachers or avoidant love attachers. And I'll talk about that more in a moment. There's the malignant narcissist. There's the covert incest people are experiencing in relationship. I mean, the list goes on and on of the dysfunctionality of human beings. I think it's really important to understand that because when we approach the dating process with an expectation that this person that we might be meeting has the capacity to actually lean into a healthy, happy relationship, we might be setting up ourselves for failure. Now, I don't mean to be a pessimist either because I, I, I do believe most human beings are good people. Deep down, they're good people for the most part. I think there's very few people that are genuinely evil. At the same time, I do believe we have a significant population of men and women alike that are rather dysfunctional. It makes it hard to build the deep roots of trust. Folks, I want you to think about this for a moment. Our current dating practice is, and for the most part here in the United States, if you haven't, if a guy hasn't had sex with you by the third or fourth date, he's probably out the door. Out the door. Isn't that sad that that would happen? That a person would leave if they haven't had physical intimacy with you. And yet at the same time, they haven't demonstrated any level of trust in the relationship. Maybe they paid for a few dates. Maybe they shared their backstory with you. But what trust has been built in the early stages? And when I think of trust, I think of 
Can I count on this person to be there for me, not just during the good times? Can I count on this person to be there for the bad times? Can I count on this person to be genuinely loyal to me when it comes to fidelity? Can I count on this person to care about my feelings as much as I care about my own feelings? Trust, as many of you know, is not given away per se. It's earned over time. And it's sad because if it's not built, if you haven't built the deep roots of trust, it makes it very difficult to lean into, as I always talk about, a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship. So what makes a relationship thrive? What makes a relationship go deeper than the surface? I want you to think about this for a moment because I know many of you are stuck on the romantic notion of relationships, that a man should just be chivalrous and you can just lean back in your feminine energy and you don't have to do anything, and it's just going to magically work out. And yet I'm a big proponent of recognizing that the dating process is like a two-lane street, two cars traveling at the same speed together of effort and investment, effort and investment. If you're not familiar with the book, I grab it over here. If the Buddha dated, if the Buddha dated, what I love about this book is it throws out the traditional gender rhetoric of what should happen, and it focuses more on the heart-centered way a relationship could be built. Heart-centered way. Isn't that really what it's all about? What makes a man go, I hope I don't lose her? It's he's connected with her heart. He's connected with her heart. And I know many of you, and by the way, I, I recognize the frustration many of you are experiencing because you do give your heart to a man. And yet oftentimes you also give your power away to a man. In other words, you're afraid to establish your standards. You're afraid to establish your boundaries because there, a minute there's mutual attraction between two people, you're pretzeling yourself to try to make the relationship work. Now, I think this happens because traditionally throughout time, women have been dependent upon men for their survival. So on some level, I think we've been conditioned to have this one up, one down dynamic where women might be the gatekeepers of the sexual piece and men are the gatekeepers of the commitment piece. Isn't that sad? Now, that's not always the case, but this is genuinely the case. This is why I continually see women afraid to speak their truth in relationship. They're afraid to speak up for fear that a man might leave them. Folks, if you're not familiar with my book, and by the way, all the books I recommend are um, in the description below. You can check out Jonathan Recommend Books. My ch first chapter is Speak Your Truth. Do it with kindness. But later on the book, and this isn't a dating or relationship book, later on the book I say, if it's sincere and from the heart, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. I'm talking when you genuinely talk from your heart. You know, real bonding happens when we're vulnerable, when we're authentic, when we're transparent, when two people are capable of doing that. And yet, sadly, the deepest wound, wound most people are suffering from is, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. Think about that. The average person's wound is, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. This is true of men and women alike. This is why I'm a big proponent of doing personal development work, self-help, spiritual work, therapy. Therapy. To dig deep as to what might be causing our inability to lean into a relationship too. And, and by the way, this is true of men and women alike. Now, I know many of you are going, well, Jonathan, we women do all the work. What about the men? Listen, I went to a personal development workshop called the Hoffman Process. I want to share this with you uh, for a second. Here's a copy of the book. I went to the live retreat, the Hoffman Process. Do you know there was 39 people there? 20 of them were men and 19 were women. Over half were men. Men do personal development work. Men do, men may not go to, you know, it's interesting. You know, men go to therapy just like women go to therapy. I just want you to know that they do go. Maybe does, do women go at a greater percentage? I don't know the stats on that. 
But I do know men and women alike are thirsty for that capacity to share their fears, to share their anxieties, to share their insecurities. And yet we men have been so conditioned that if we share these, we are perceived as weak. We can't show weakness. Women have been conditioned in a different way. Sadly, women have been conditioned that their whole value is based on looks. Isn't that sad? And it's perpetuated by magazines, Cosmo, all the, you know, the, the advertising we see. Women are objectified based on looks. Men cannot be vulnerable, authentic, and transparent because that demonstrates weakness. That demonstrates our inability to protect you. Not every guy can, can protect you physically. Most men have never had a fight in their life. So if some real, real mugger or someone with a gun, we are most likely going to fail. So it has nothing to do with our height, our capacity to protect you. I know many of you feel greater protection when you're with someone that of height, but that's a fallacy. At least here in the United States, unless someone has had physical training to protect you, most of us will fail under a real crisis situation. I'm just expressing the way I see the reality of the world. I'm not saying any of this is right. I'm here to just draw attention that the real journey of life, and I come back to this title, isn't about whether or not the things you need to do to make a man attracted to you. These things aren't necessarily anything you should do. It's what two people should do together to build attraction. By the way, I don't like the way my collar looks here. <laughs> Okay, but both people should do to develop this attraction to to make it feel like you don't want to lose each other. So let me dive into my notes here and I'll share with you what I've written here. By the way, there you go. <laughs> um, I do want to clean my glasses, though, for a second. And these five things, I think, are more designed for the healthier person, that person that has good emotional maturity, good relationship skills. Doesn't have to be the perfect person in the world, but they have good skills in these areas. And the first skill is conflict resolution skills. You know, men and women alike feel frustrated when they're in a relationship with someone where you're butting heads, when there's a difference of opinion, you're butting heads, you're, you're more apt to say, I'd rather be right than happy. One of the things I appreciate about the relationship I'm in is when we've had a few bumps in the road, we both listen to what each other says. We acknowledge what each other says. And then we validate that that's true for their perspective. In other words, we don't make the other person out to be wrong. Those are skills for good conflict resolution skills. And what I mean to say is be able to navigate conflicts with a bit more ease. If you're not familiar with the book, where is it? Ah, oh, I wonder if I, well, here's, an, here's a book I wanna recommend. If you're not familiar with the book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, I'd highly recommend checking this out. It helps to, teach you how to improve your communication skills in relationship. I recommend if you're in a relationship with someone, you both should be reading this. You should both be actually engaging in this. Listen, folks, if this penis gets to go regularly inside your vagina, then I'm here to encourage that you begin a practice of personal development, self-help, spiritual work, therapy in your relationship, counseling, if you will, in your relationship right from the very beginning. Not necessarily on the first date, but once you have regular intimacy with each other. But Jonathan, I'm in a long distance relationship. I can't do that. Folks, long distance relationships are incredibly problematic because when I talked about trust earlier, it takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build the first layer of trust. It takes 200 hours of face-to-face -face time to build the second layer of trust. It takes 300 hours of face-to-face -face time to build the third layer of trust. It takes 400 face-to-face -face hours together to build the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. Can you, do you get this? 
Relationships built over the telephone and FaceTime are a very weak, are built on a very weak foundation. True love is built through social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, and integration of your life together. And what I mean by true love, what I mean is the true attachment and bonding. Unhealthy people can attach over the telephone. I've witnessed this so many times. Women come to me and say, Jonathan, I've been in this relationship with a guy we have never met, but he's so, so attached to me. Yeah, it's an unhealthy attachment or an infatuation or maybe some precursor to lust that's happening over the phone and not a real building. I'm saying it takes face-to-face -face time to build the deep roots of trust. And more importantly, the capacity for both of you to navigate those difference in relationships with good conflict resolution skills. Number two, intimate time, both physical and emotional intimate time. Listen, I recognize ladies, a lot of the men you're with are just with one of those, what I call pump and dump types. You know, they basically have sex with you so they can ejaculate inside of you, okay? And those men are very selfish lovers. I get it. And you might, with some of those men, you might actually experience an orgasm. I don't know. But for the most part, if he's a selfish lover, it's rare that you're going to experience real connection with him. Because ultimately, it's not just the physical intimacy we men crave. It's the emotional intimacy. It's that intimacy that we, we can feel safe. We can feel vulnerable with you. We do feel that sense of trust. That's emotional intimacy. And if you're not familiar with the book, Emotional Intimacy by Robert Masters, I highly recommend checking this book out. Because if you don't understand the mechanics to building emotional intimacy, then many of you are just winging it. You're winging it. You're winging it. You're just kind of hoping that magic fairy dust is going to make things work out. Now, some people, just like the broken clock that's right twice a day, some people do, get the, do experience emotional intimacy. The others, if they haven't learned what emotional intimacy is, they rarely are going to find themselves in, experience of, in the experience of emotional intimacy. So again, this makes them feel like I don't want to lose her when we're getting all this. Next is shared duties. Remember I talked earlier about two cars traveling at the same speed? Shared duties in your life, acting like your teammates with one another. You know, with my mom and dad, it was my dad was the provider and my mom was the homemaker. But shared duties, just like if you're, if you're hosting Thanksgiving dinner that recently happened, you know, in my world, experience that we took turns in preparing for this, relate couples that actually operate as teammates with one another, not the expecting the one. Listen, I think it's unfair that men expect things from you and not do it in return, but I also believe it's the same with women when you expect things from men and not willing to reciprocate in that same level. And when you act as teammates, however that looks for the two of you, you start to build those deep roots of trust I talked about earlier. Number five, play. Do you know how few folks actually, I, I witness relationships and there's very, very few couples I, I, that write me complaining about their relationship. Play and flirting is missing from the relationship. Couples should be constantly playing with one another. Their little kids should come out I don't mean playing blocks or dolls or things like that or, or video games. I'm talking about your little kid coming out and playing with one another. That place that feels safe and flirtation is one of those aspects of play. I believe that those couples that continually flirt with one another in a cute, playful way are the ones, the men that go, and women go, I don't want to lose this person. And last but not least, I mentioned this before, is integration of your lives. When you can integrate with family, friends, social activities, hobbies, mutual interests. Those, when you can integrate your life together, your, your work life, 
You're building the deep roots of attachment to a person. And I mean healthy attachment to a person and not the unhealthy attachment most people are experiencing today. And sadly, many of you are in unhealthy relationships. You're attached to a person that's unhealthy and you're not standing in your power. This is why I continually recommend the book, ladies, if you haven't read this, and I don't agree with everything in this book, but this book, oops, excuse me, the wrong one. Where is it? <laughs> why men love bitches. And bitch stands for babe in total control of herself, BS. When you're in your power, when you're standing in your power, you become incredibly attractive to another human being who is also in their power. Men do not like doormats. Healthy, listen, controlling men love doormats. You know, uh, alpha males who are controlling prefer submissive women. I'm here to encourage you to stand in your power because listen, as much as you'd like to met, have men be the leaders of the relationship, I'm here to say you are in charge of your relationship destiny. You are in charge of your choices. Look, I wish I could be there for you as your big brother on a first date with a shotgun pointed at the guy's head saying, what's your intentions? See, accountability for one's actions go basically not unnoticed. Accountability. There's very little accountability today. So you have to be in charge of your life, setting your standards, setting your boundaries, and whatever that looks like for you. Folks, my standard for a relationship looked like this. I wanted to spend three or four days and nights a week together doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that led to either moving in together or getting married. Well, that's what happened in my relationship in six months. We were intentional. Listen, don't expect men to be intentional. You should be intentional with your life and then find men who match you. Send out that energy that you know your standard and you won't accept anything less than a person that meets you, not exactly meets you in the perfect box because that doesn't exist, but at least is meeting you and saying, I want to build something with you because without it, it's going to be difficult to have that kind of relationship where you feel like, I don't wanna lose this person. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. I am so grateful for all your questions. I am so grateful for the super stickers, super chats. You guys are so wonderful. Thank you so much for all the love and support. I just wanna remind you that folks, being intentional, being your own matchmaker, learning how to ask better questions is a pathway to relationship success because you can't expect men to know this. And yet men who genuinely care about you will take your lead. Men who genuinely care about you will take your lead. And I think you should start from the very first date, establishing your standards so you're both on the same page. That's something I teach in my private coaching. And if you need help with that, check out the link to a free discovery call with me to see if working with the coach is right for you. Has this content resonated with you? Please let me know. Please hit that like button. Please share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you're brand new and check out all the links in the description below. All right, I think this will be a great place to wrap up this video. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrett of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera, ooh, pit stains. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. There's a teddy bear and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives.